Meet Pastor Julie Okudare, a devout woman of God, wife, mother, and entrepreneur. A God-fearing woman who has devoted her time to ensuring that God's message is used to empower everyone, but most especially, women. With a strong belief in the importance of women empowering women and educating each other through our life experiences, she is the founder of Women's Forum, Let's Be Real, a forum for women to work through issues and set and accomplish goals together. Held every second Friday of every month at 6 Elton Road, Lee Green, London. Keep up with Let's Be Real here on PRZFM every Tuesday, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Let's Be Real on PRZ Radio 109.2 FM. I'm so delighted to bring this program to you wherever you are. My name is Jumi Opredare. I'm your host. And I want to say a massive thank you to all our listeners all over the world for tuning in every Tuesday to listen to what we have to say on this show. I'm so happy tonight to have in the studio with me my very own guys, Afo JJ and DJ Serge. You're welcome again on this show. Thank you for having us again. It's a pleasure every time. Thank uh, you. All right. Tonight, as you maybe you've seen the advert, maybe you haven't seen it. We are discussing something that is very, very close to our heart. Something that we know that you, our listeners, we have one thing or the other to pick from. Or just to confirm that you are doing some things that we are going to advise others to be doing today. So, the topic we have before us today is building the parents and child relationship. And I believe that you will agree with me that this is very important. It's very important in this day and age, in this generation, that parents and children must have a very solid relationship. It's very, very crucial. And we are going to look at why, and if not, what, sh what will happen, what have we been seeing, what will continue to happen if is not the case, and how can we improve on this relationship? Even if you are doing the right thing now, we can continue to improve. And even if it's not right, you can start to amend it. And I believe by the grace of God, things will begin to improve after today. If you have any topic in mind that you want us to bring on here, don't forget that you can email it to us on lesbiryrplzfm.com lesbiryrplzfm.com if you have any question you have any suggestion please do go ahead and email to send an email to us we will respond and god bless you as you continue to tune in thank you so much guys for coming in today and let's just dig deep into this topic and our listeners are waiting to hear from you guys okay my first uh, topic that we are going to talk about is uh, why is it important for parents and child to have a good and healthy relationship? Why, in your own view, what do you want to say? I think that is it's quite essential to have that healthy relationship between the parents and the child. As family, there's a lot of things that talk about your family being first, your family being very important in your upbringing, in your life and just the way you can develop as a person there's a lot of home training you can have that can come from a good relationship even just your ability to trust and to rely on your family is very important to have as they're always going to be in your life they're a core they're a core factor to being in your life you can't really pick mm. your family that's something that is already given to you that's whereas true. other external factors like your friends your your surroundings you can all change that but your family you'll never be able to change so it's quite important to try to develop that relationship and have a strong bond if possible thank you so much uh for <coughs> jj dj Saj? yeah just continue on from that point there because i feel like your family they are the people that you know the longest in your life and you should know the best and they should know you the best as in mm. parents should know the child better than anyone else and i just feel like having a good relationship between parent and child for the child it shapes the person they become in the future mm. so like if you don't have that healthy relationship it will show in your upbringing and how you grow up and also like your mentality like how you view things in life like your ambitions like it's just your whole character building like 
I feel like your relationship with your parents is what builds it and shapes it. So having a healthy relationship will affect your upbringing. Fantastic. So what you are saying is that that's the foundation of one's life and it's, it has to be solid. It has to be taken seriously. We have to work at it. You have to know that this one is not a matter of choice. You didn't choose your family and whatever you take from your family, you will express it outside to people yeah. outside. Like some people will say that when a child is being abused at home, we abuse others at, outside as well. So we are saying that it's very, very key for us to take our family seriously and values that we take from our families. Thank you so much. Yeah, Is there any other thing you want to add to that? I would also say like your family, like just being at home, that should be the safest place for a mm. child. A child should feel safest at home, like feel most That's comfortable at home. Yeah. So I feel like if for a child to feel that way, the relationship between the parent needs to be a healthy and a good one. Because mm. if as a child you don't feel like you can be comfortable, you don't feel safe at home, mm. then it's, you're not going to want to be at home. And as a parent, you should want your child to feel as safe as and as comfortable as possible because that's your child like when you as a parent when you grow older mm. you want you want to see your child become successful you want your child to be able to look after you mm. when you won't be able to look after your child anymore so, fantastic yeah. that's a very key point a very very key point because if they if the uh, children should go away with negative feelings it will be very difficult to come back so thank you so much. But mm. well, why are these things not happening? What are the barriers causing these issues with parents and kids in today's generation? Why? I feel like there's a lot of barriers that are based on lack of understanding. Lack of understanding? I feel like a lot of kids and their parents, they don't really understand each other. They they have a lot of assumptions. So mm. if we take it from the the parents' point of view, they can have a lot of assumptions on the kids that are oh, you're not trying hard enough, you're not you're not focused, but you might not actually understand what's actually going on in your in your child's life mm. and what is really affecting his decisions and his behaviours. And that could that could make you act in a certain type of way mm. which is now causing a barrier in building a relationship. Mm. And then even if you flip it now, the kids can might be thinking their parents are very strict or very annoying and on their case. Mm. But they not, might not be seeing the the deeper purpose of the parent which is just for them to want the best from them so mm. it's just a, sometimes a lack of understanding can cause barriers and this could usually be solved like we can get into the solutions later but it's like a lack of understanding is a, is a big is a big barrier that shouldn't be there if mm. one one another actually have a good relationship once you have a good relationship you understand each other you get each other and your family that's something that you'd you'd like to assume that mm. should be that should be there Wow, thank you so much. Yeah, um, just to um, reinforce what you were saying about the lack of understanding. I feel like with a lack of understanding, that can stem off into many different um, sectors as well because there's like the general lack of understanding, but there can be lack of understanding in certain areas as well of the relationship. So like um, due to lack of understanding, that can now lead to poor communication between the parent and the child. And if there's poor communication between parent and child, that's automatically going to become another barrier mm. in, within the relationship. And I feel like with the lack of understanding as well, it's like it can lead to lack of understanding in like different areas, like let's say with technology. So if there's a lack of understanding, like if the parent and the child don't have a common understanding of, no of the technology we use, that becomes a barrier because one thing that the child might understand that the parent doesn't understand mm. or lead to like a um i don't know how to word it but it's mm -hmm. like they they won't be able to, yeah they won't be able, yeah it will lead to a conflict they won't be a common ground like mm. it will lead to a conflict because of that lack of technology okay, mm. in terms but, of okay so but okay let's say social media for instance let's mm. i'll say like um if the parent doesn't understand social media the way the child does so let's say now the child is always on social media because as you know like nowadays like i feel like a lot of parents don't know this but like as a child you can actually make money just from using social media by being a social media influencer mm. like you, but i feel like a lot of parents won't understand that it wasn't in their generation. yeah because it wasn't in their generation they won't understand that so they might just see 
their child always on the phone on the laptop just always using social media and see them as oh you're being lazy you're not going out trying to get a job you're not working hard like you're not doing anything good for yourself but because of the lack of understanding Mm. of the technology they don't understand that that um road that the child is going down using social media is actually better for themselves Mm. and they're actually doing something well for themselves yeah having said that you know the parents have to know that that child is able to make up decisions that are good yeah make a decision that is good for himself because if you if the child has an history of not wanting mm. to do anything mm. so they, but then also yeah. i feel like it's on the parents ability to know when to give control and when to take a leading role yeah because a lot of parents a lot of people are said to have strict parents and i don't think having strict parents is a bad thing i think having controlling parents mm. can be a bad thing because if you're controlling that's where you want to take take control of your kid's life and that could actually be not what your kid wants and if that's the case it's like there's not going to be a common ground there's not going to be a common solution it's always going to be a conflict mm. as, as previously said so it's like you need to know when to give the responsibility for your your child mm-hmm. to to take decisions and to to make mm. make mm. the decisions that they want to do in their lives and if you agree with it or when to give advice so mm. as a parent, it doesn't mean like oh you should just let them do because it could also work either way where you have no no sense of control or no sense yeah. and that's where your your child can go completely downhill and mm-hmm. and go down wrong paths so mm-hmm. it's about finding the right balance of right balance. taking control giving advice and also letting them have some freedom to mm. to take control of their own life in a way mm. that's that's very important so we are saying that that the parents we parents have a lot to learn we have a lot to learn and the children has a lot to learn as well so that we yeah. can meet on the on the mi- middle i feel like even with with a lot of children and kids in our generation they don't really understand their role of building the relationship there's a lot of barriers that are on the children's part it's mm. as if they're not willing to mm. to listen they're not willing to to take advice or because mm-hmm. the parents are have more experience than you in a lot of a lot of things in in life and they're the ones that you should should be guiding you so mm-hmm. if the parent is trying to but the the child is not willing to listen mm. you can't blame the parent yeah it's, it's the child's true. part you've got yeah. to be willing to listen mm-hmm. you've got to also be willing to to participate and help out where possible so it's like for example it's like as a child if your parent is trying to get to know you more mm. it's not possible unless you allow, allow yourself them. you open yourself and mm. allow them to to get to know you and know your interests because mm. it's not all for your parents to be psychic and understand everything. Yeah. They're not they're not they're not gonna know anything through your brain. So mm-hmm. you've got to be able to give and be able to make it known yeah. mm-hmm. what you want or how you like things to be done or like just express yourself as well. So yeah. it's a fifty fifty, it's give and take. You can't just expect them to, to know everything and, and be perfect when you're not really making any effort. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely right. Because even when some parents have made mistakes, they can still advise and say, this is the path I went through and wasn't good. You, my child, I don't want you to go that way. I don't know. Well, I hope some children are listening to us now. We need to weigh the options and see. Let, let's step back and think of what the child is saying. Let's step back and think about what mommy and daddy are saying which way can it benefit you and anyone that is playing about knows within themselves that they are being lazy yeah. only that the other person if it's not being expressed to them that they're hard working that they will classify everybody as being lazy so we need to see what the child is doing and the parents as well need to take responsibility to investigate and to assist and to help their children may god help all of us in jesus name Mm -hmm. just to also add to that i feel like you said very something very important is i think one thing parents are quite they're quite vital for is the surroundings and the friendship groups that the the Mm. child has Mm. and i feel like this could also impact their behaviors and their attitudes because there's going to be a lot of times where parents aren't going to be monitoring the children Mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot of times where the more time when you're in school you're with your friends more time than you're at home sometimes yeah. you can feel mm. like that way mm. you're at school every day of the week and this is going to be a big important pa- um, factor of how you develop as a character so if your friends are, are kind of not really the right kind of crowd your mm. child should be with it could impact their 
relationship with the parents because they could be telling you, oh, don't listen to your mum. <laughs> you're a big mm. man now. You're 15, you're 16 now. You're 18 now. Like, mm. but it's like, if your friendship group, like, they're showing respect and they have a strong relationship with their parents, it could also kind of want to, it might want to influence the in, individuals to build their own relationship with their parents. Mm. So it's just like, that kind of environment mm. that the children or the kids are growing up in could also impact the the parent child relationship. Just adding on to that, like that sort of links back to the first question of why it's important to have a healthy relationship with your parent because I feel like if you have that healthy relationship with your parent, like when you're not at home, you will know like the right sort of crowd to be around because your parents would have taught you and helped you to understand like the kind of people you need to keep around you. So if you have that healthy relationship, when you're not at home, it will still reflect on you mm. when you're at school with your friends. Like, so you might see like your friends doing something that you know your parents have told you is not the right thing to do. But because of that relationship you have with your parents and you know it's not the right thing to do, you won't get involved with it because you say to yourself, this is not how my parents raised me. I know if my parents found out I was doing this, it will mm. make them upset. They won't be happy with me. Mm. And like, but whereas if you don't have that relationship with your parents, when you're outside of your home, you're, you won't ever think of how, of how your actions will make your parents feel or the consequences mm. of your actions to your parents. Yes, that's, that's good. Because I was listening to someone saying one day, he said, many of my friends, that, that I was, I'm quoting that, that person, many of my friends smoke and I just told them it's too late. It's nothing that I can do. It's too late. It's mm. not acceptable in my family. I didn't grow up with it. And I would never do it. So, and I, I was listening to the, they were having discussion, and I said, "Hmm, this is a this is a good thing that this person has taken from the family. That it's too late for me to try something mm -hmm. ridiculous that I don't do in my house. So, I, it's very very important for us to have a solid relationship before the children uh, goes away from the home. So, now let's look at this: African parents versus Western world parents." It's a big thing, isn't it? So how will you differentiate them? Or what are the similarities? Or what are the differences? I feel within these different, um, the African parents and the Western world parents, or let's say English parents, as for an example, I feel like there's still going to be a lot of like differences within both. You can mm. find strict parents, you can find good parents, mm. you can find bad parents within both. I feel like within African parents, a lot of them are from... Africa. A lot of the generation has moved from living in one one part of the world to another part of the world. So it's quite a transitional pro, um, mm. process. Whereas the Western world is like they're all in the same environment. So mm. it's like there's they don't really have as much cultural adap adap um, adaptions that mm. in comparison. So I feel like with African parents, there's a lot of cultures and values that they're taking from how they were brought up. And think it still applies now. Mm. I feel like a lot of the times, a lot of the core values and and principles are very good and correct in terms mm. of how to raise your kids with manners and values mm. and respect. Mm. I feel like sometimes it might be difficult for African parents to to embrace change. Mm. So as we previously spoke with technology, mm. if I give a quick example with um, career wise, let's say a child was to say, "Oh, I don't want to." finish school i want to pursue uh a music career or uh be an artist or take a creative creative role mm. i feel like the approaches on more african parents will be different to the western world just oh, due yeah. to the fact that in that part of the world those aren't creative musicians are they're not seen as a proper job mm. in quotation marks mm. they're not seen as a that's the right path to go to a lot of them believe that it has to be the educational view that's we why we're in this country we won't even uh, examine maybe the person is skilled to do that yep. and progress mm. they won't in evaluate that. at all they won't take <laughs> any mm. any analysis on whether there's a good profession or mm. whether that's the the child's hobby or passion mm. or if he's good at it they'll just see it as black and white is good or it's bad <laughs> whereas i feel like within the western world is like they're a bit more open-minded mm. It just generally speaking a bit more open-minded to listening to what the child might want to do and maybe mm. just the awareness of oh these kind of careers are are more common now mm. as opposed to oh the, the medicines the the doctors the lawyers the engineers mm. i feel like there's a lot of traditional 
professions that African parents believe is the only way to go. So that's just an example mm. of. Mm. Oh, but then if we flip it now, I believe there's other pros that with African and African parents really install, mm. like just the home training, the values of your family. Mm. You don't speak to elderly by their first name. I feel like mm-hmm. yeah. it, people mm-hmm. might think that oh, why, why can't you say? But it's it's all it's all down to values. These are your elders. You respect your elders. You embrace them with a bit more with respect. Mm. It's just like it just it does it just is a different kind of culture to just speaking to other people parents with anyhow because I feel like when you're speaking to them on a friend to friend basis, it can get lost. Mm. Yeah. You just get lost in 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 just casualness of like oh, nah, telling your mom to shut up. Like <laughs> it's it's common within the Western world because mm. not all of it, not to generalize, yeah. there's, there's still other people that will have the core understanding of values and respects, mm. but it's just there's a there's a underlying reason why they install these these traits and these respects in, mm. into you from from a young age. Mm. Thank you so much. That's true. You, all what you have said is true. Yeah. Do you have anything to add to that? Um, the only thing I was gonna contribute to you was um, what you mentioned, like with the whole first name <laughs> calling of the parents, because I feel like that could like within the rest of the world that could either go one way or the other because sometimes like when i think about it like when like i've seen people call like their parents by their first name like for me it's straight away i'm thinking what's going like what is going on like like that, that's just, that's because i feel like in the african in an african culture growing up like your mom is your mom and your dad is your dad like there's no there's no first there's no first name all you know is the surname because it's the same as yours but like their name is mommy and daddy like, that's that's the way it feels growing up so then when i see someone else called their parent by the first time like it, i'm confused because i'm thinking this like we're not age mates you know what i mean like they, they didn't employ you that's your mom and your dad like you can't call them by the first name but then at the same time like sometimes i think like by them calling them by the first name and the parents even like accepting it does it sort of help the relationship like make them be able to confide in their parents more friends, yeah because friends, yeah because that relationship now has that that friend that friendly stance to it so i feel like in some cases like it actually does help the relationship between them and the parent like they feel like they can come to their parent and talk openly about anything mm. because they feel they see their parent as their friend mm. but then at the same time i feel like it can also like deteriorate the respect levels that should be there because yeah, i feel like once you get angry yeah like you once you get a bit too comfortable mm-hmm. in that in that friendly zone like i feel like the level of respect has sort of diminished at the same time i feel like just to touch on something i mm. feel like there's a there's a fine line between fear and respect mm-hmm. i feel like a lot of african parents they're not really sure on the difference between <laughs> Installing fear yeah, and or... building respect mm. because even if we bring it down to a base of discipline, hmm. if you want to discipline your child, I believe that's very important. Mm. But then, if your 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 fundamentals of of disciplining your child is based on making sure that they're scared, hmm. and if I raise my hand, if I say <laughs> jump, you fly. <laughs> if I say your name more than three times. <laughs> You are in big trouble. Like, do you know what I mean? I feel like it's very easy to get lost in the trail of creating fear mm. where that's not really going to enhance the relationship. Because you are not even sure what you've done. You are not sure yeah, where Yeah, yeah, and the kids, it's like, you might believe that they're well-behaved, but they're scared of you. And mm. that's going to go back to the trust factor. Like, if yeah. they're scared of you, are they going to open up to you with certain mm. issues? Are they going to confide in you? Or are they just going to make sure that they, that you're, they're not going to be in trouble. Mm. It's living in a life of fear. You're going to be more concealing things rather than opening up. Mm. But there's other ways you can do it where you still have like a discipline, but it's like you always teach them. You make sure they know the reason and then you embrace them with love at the same time. Mm. So I feel like there's just that, that barrier or that fine line that I feel like African parents... To be honest, it's not just African parents. Western, I feel like sometimes they they struggle with the discipline in, in yeah. itself. Where, yeah. where it's, you lose all sense of discipline and there's no respect anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's, a, it's about balancing it. Mm. That, is, that is very, very important that we should know. And I think African parents are understanding that now that your children should not be afraid of you. Mm. I remember when uh, my generation was going uh, growing up, you can't sit down where your dad is sitting. You can't sit down together and be chatting like friends. 
ah that is there you we have to go and stay somewhere else you know mm. and that is improving with time now that is improving and that should i don't know if that is still happening in your environment parents please listen your children should not be afraid of you because this is what these guys are saying that they will not open up to you yeah. if you are afraid of you they will not open up you will not know what is happening in their lives and that is why friends outside we give them counsel mm. yep definitely i feel like with with the subject here once like the parent has instilled fear into the child the moment they have a taste of freedom that's when Aww. everything <laughs> <all> over, <laughs> everything goes wrong from there because that's like that's the big thing like w like within this country they always say like when people go to uni they're different from how they were mm. back home mm. and that's because back home they're still under their parents roof and they know they can't do certain stuff because of that fear that they have with their parents like like they may never be allowed out never be allowed to do anything but as soon as they get to uni and and, and, they've, and they've realized my parents are not around yeah, anymore not around there's anymore. no one that i should be afraid of like i can do things without being afraid mm. so that's when f they take things to the extreme because th that's the only opportunity to mm. really enjoy that sense of freedom mm. you said you i think you mentioned something like that that uh parents should be willing to listen and give them freedom and not be yeah, controlling. it's important yeah. because mm. it's like just as dj sar just said if you always hide them or mm. keep them exposed the minute that they can get through them mm. they will just it will be too much it'll be overwhelming mm. or they'll just be exci overly excited whereas if it's something that they've embraced or they've been aware of it i think it's just even awareness of it mm. or at least don't i feel like african parents they like to they like to console things like if it's not for them it's like it shouldn't even be discussed it shouldn't even be but mm. this is real life there's real more there's outside the four walls of your house there's going to be a yeah. lot that mm. your kids are going to go through so it's mm. rather address it and let your house be a place where it's open to discuss things it's like that will prepare them more for going out so you should see yeah. it as train them let them know keep them aware rather than yes i know there's no in between. There's no mm. discussion. There's no pimp. Do you understand? So it's like it's more of a chance to train them and and make them feel comfortable, so they know and they're better prepared. And something you just said um, about letting things be open for discussion um, is like done a little bit of research, and someone said that parent like, they feel like African parents need to understand that not everything is always a shouting matter. So like, cause I feel like when parents are discussing with their children sometimes they feel like shouting is that's um, that's the normal way to to talk with their, with their child and it's not always the correct way because if you're just shouting at your child i promise you the information is not really no. going in mm. the information won't be going in and like more time if you're shouting at your child your child is not going to be replying back so it's not even a conversation anymore mm. so, but like if you can just sit down with your child and actually talk you say your points let mm. them hear what they have to say as well your child would definitely respect you more because they feel like okay like they can actually have a conversation with you at where you're listening to them and will learn or be willing to understand their points as well as them hearing yours this is les billy on plz radio 109.2 fm we're talking about our parents and child relationship how to build a better relationship and we are the these amazing guys have been talking about what we parents especially african parents are missing out on what we should improve on no shouting have dialogue with your children let them be encourage them advise them not being a dictatorship not being somebody that creates fear in the hearts of the children that they are so afraid of expressing themselves or making they are what is known to you so we need to take that on board and at the same time they've advised the children that they have to listen to their parents they have more experience than them they want them to do good they are they 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 want them to succeed in life so children should not think that they know more than their parents there are some things like technology that they know more than their parents but at the same time we need to listen to them educate each other on the areas that we are lacking and that we um, um, encourage us and please when your children 
when your parents are asking you to educate them on something like social media please don't block them off teach them let them know let them understand so that when they go out they will be proud and say my my son my daughter taught me my son taught me this and they will be up to date as well so please don't let us be secretive don't let us hide from each other this will build a better relationship between uh the parents and the child now let's talk about this what impact does a bad relationship with parents we have on a child supposing we have what you have said before a shouting mother a shouting father that creates fear in the heart of the child that will not listen that will not allow the child to have any freedom not a child that you know that is wayward already that you want mm. to call but a child that you don't even allow to know anything that is happening there so what impact will he have on this particular type of child i feel like um the child first things first will have a lack of discipline and self-control i'll say mm. because i feel like discipline and self-control is something that is learned from home mm. so if um you have a bad relationship with your parents the first i feel like the first thing a child might feel is anger and sort of hatred mm. like because of the parent might not even be directly towards the parents but towards i feel like anybody to, outside. yeah towards mm. anyone outside because see some angry children on the road yeah. in school because mm. if your environment is always full of anger yeah. you, need to sick. you need to mm. de if this is somewhere that you live mm. live because yeah. most kids live with their parents if it's somewhere you live where the whole your whole environment of resting which is this is your house meant to be somewhere where there's peace mm. yeah. imagine if uh, this environment is full of anger and you're naturally going to be like that even when you leave the house yeah. it's going to mm. be you're filled with anger and also it's going to be like a case where you don't open up to other people mm. yeah. or you you're not really willing to to trust or, or listen to other people because your parents you don't trust and listen to them mm. so yeah. it's like what makes you you that you're not even my blood <laughs> you understand mm. but i also feel like it's important to mention that even even we'll go back to more negative things but i feel like it's still common that kids and um, parents can not have great relationship and still do well yeah mm. i feel like there's kids that whether it's the kid or the parents that are the fault the fault of the bad relationship mm. i feel mm. like it, it's not really uh a hindrance yeah. Yeah. yeah like some some parents they might have bad influence on their child and the child can still have independence mm. to the level where they can still pursue good things yeah. and yeah. and they might yeah, 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 determine yeah. and mm. they don't have a good relationship with their parents mm. but mm. it doesn't really hold them back so i feel mm. like there are cases where it's not the end of the world mm. it's the same with parents sometimes their kids are they've done what they can do they've mm. they really tried but there's factors that are out of their control mm. and it's quite it's, it might be quite sad but it doesn't mean that the the parent is to blame or the mean mm. that the parent is a bad parent Mm. Because of it, because of it, so I feel like it's very important. Yeah. To that. I feel like it's like it just comes down to how you let it all affect you as an individual. Yeah. Mm. Because like, like you can either take it one way or the other. Like your relationship with your parent at home is bad, so you're gonna let it affect you in a negative way, or you can take it as okay, the relationship's not good, but you want to prove to yourself and prove to your parent that even mm. though our relationship is not good you may not have treated me the best way mm. i'm still gonna prove to myself and prove to everyone else i can still make it like and that's the key yeah. that's this space mm. 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 just you that, just have to be ambitious yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's ambition. ambition because there's really some people that you don't understand the reason why they they genuinely don't believe they can make it is because of the relationship at home mm. the parents could have said something like you're useless or you're, you're, you're not like another thing I need to mention is compare, comparing comparison mm. yeah. that could be the reason why a, a kid doesn't believe they're good or they're not successful mm. or anything they're always being compared to others or they're always being looked down upon like oh you're not as good as him you didn't do well in school you, you, your other he's good at football you're, you're not good at football <laughs> yeah, I mean it's, these are the words that you, you feed out can have strong impacts yeah. mm. so it's like it could really be the reason why someone doesn't believe there's much to live for and that's why their whole behavior and attitude towards life is in a certain way but then on the flip side we said there's people that they don't let them words get get to get to their heads that's true they yeah. even use it as more motivation mm -hmm. yeah. they use it as you think that but you're not the you're not the the 
the rule of my life I can mm. still go on and achieve things and yeah. it's happened in, in many cases so it's, it could end up both ways to be honest and I think with the comparison thing I feel like um, like I, I, I'll say like in the African household I feel like parents sometimes don't really understand the impacts that could have on a child when they compare them with someone else like because imagine as a child if with everything you do your parents are all saying oh well look at this person look look how Jonathan is the same age as you he's not you you and Jonathan are not the same people your situation is not the same you're not in the same environment so it's like when you're being compared to someone who's not going through what you're going through or might even have more advantages than you but your parent is always trying to compare you like with someone else in any given situation like as a child you're naturally going to think okay like do you do you want this person to be your child instead of me like like you're you're naturally going to start thinking way like like am i not your child why are you always comparing me with this person like we're not the same people like just focus on me and like help me elevate because like comparison is like why some people could work in one way or the other it could either motivate you to now want to do better and get to that level mm. or it can just really break you down and just make you feel like you're not as important as that person or you're not as good as that person and then like this the self-love and everything will just deteriorate and i feel something that's very important with that is to understanding the individual not yeah all your kids will be the same yeah. Yeah. it's not one rule applies to all mm. you can't just use the same technique the same words that you said to one that it worked for one to just think it's going to work for the other because mm-hmm. everyone's in everyone's different yeah so with the comparison thing is i feel like it's even down to the delivery mm-hmm. yeah Maybe some kids can take stronger deliveries than others but some kids can't take it in a certain way so you need to be very careful on choice of words and i always say comparison is a thief of joy even if you want to compare with others to motivate them you should you shouldn't even do it in a com- in a comparing way you should just do it as let's look at exhibit a let's look at these what we can do to improve mm. rather than why aren't you like yeah. this or mm. you're this that they're this because that's more in a negative point of light i feel like there's techniques you can use where it's like let's motivate let's try do let's let's do better mm. and oh this is an example of how this person did this yeah let's try that mm. that's more encouraging ah oh, you're not as good as you got a star you got c <laughs> you're rubbish <laughs> what kind of child do you understand like, there's different styles and languages and, and tones you can use True. and i believe you just need to know the the type of individual that a child is and that's mm. where understanding and communication comes into all of it you know why i'm laughing i saw a post during the week on whatsapp somebody sent it to me and it, a child was sitting down very sad and the words that they wrote there was like uh, my mom and my dad are always comparing me with my mates. I see if Dangote was in their mates. Hey, 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 <laughs> Another thing I need to say this is one important question to all your parents. How come all African parents were top, top of, of the class? class? It can't be true. We need to know the reason because it's like when I was your age, is, a, is their favorite quote, when I was your age. But really, and truly, it's because we don't know when you're your age that you're saying that. <laughs> I could not stop laughing when I read that. As if Dangote is not your age, as if maybe Big Gates is not your major sweet. So we need to be very careful. Children are smarter these days. <laughs> mm. They are very, very smart. So we don't need to hide. And what parents should be saying is that this was my level. I want you to be above my own level. Yeah. If you want to be honest with yourself or with your children, I don't want you to remain on my level. I don't want you to be lo- to be below me in life, but above. And that's the prayer of every parent, I believe, except for for evil ones that doesn't know what they're doing. But parents that really fear God, that know what they're doing, that really love their children, they're always praying that their children will go farther than where they have been in life. And I believe that our listeners will agree with me that that is their own expectation for their children as well. And God will help us and God will approve of the expectation of our hearts in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Okay, before we finish, let's look at the factors that makes ideal parents, children, parent child relationship. I'll say one main thing is trust. Trust. We the parents have to trust their child and the child have to trust trust their parents as well in terms of trust you must you know you build trust you must have seen things you must have tested yourselves out and find out that oh this child i can trust Mm. like somebody was saying that they came to her and say 
I saw your daughter in so 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 place, and she said, No way, it can't be my daughter. It cannot mm. be my daughter because I know where my daughter was at that particular time, mm. and my daughter will always be where she says she's going to. And by the time the daughter came, she has somebody said they saw you somewhere. He said, What? Mm. Me? I've not even been in that area. And the parents were so confident that mm. she it can't be her until the, maybe the person that looks like her or if mm. it's not a parent that understand we just come home just and angry, start yeah. angry. you told me you are going to woolly they saw you in peckham and you wasn't what? here Imagine and how we not feel? give room for explanation and yeah. that way, next time the child will not even be able to say where because even with trust as well that helps like in environments such as schools because there's a lot of situations where like like let's talk about like in secondary school when i was in secondary school like like as a child you there's so many situations where you feel like a teacher just wants to see you get in trouble yeah and like i feel like in today's generation now like teachers there's they've sort of have an understanding of with african children when they get back home the trouble they can be in as well so i feel like like mm. it's very important for a parent to trust their child i know what their child is like because I feel like I've been in situations where a teacher has tried to put me in trouble yeah. for something I haven't done and they've called you in and you've said to them, I know my son mm. and I know my son didn't do this. <laughs> so then, like, they try to use it as, yeah. a, as, a, as a way to, yeah, your parents going to beat you. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So just like, and even for the child, just knowing that your parent has that trust in you builds the relationship as well. Mm. And then, like, even other factors, there's other factors just as, like, communication, having communication between mm. um, parent and child. Um, support as well like yeah. going both ways uh, parents support your child's dreams goals mm. and as a child as well support whatever your parent is doing. doing fine thank you so much uh i want to say thank you to both of you for coming in this has i believe that many people that didn't listen to us you can go back on soundcloud and download it uh a parents child relationship i think you will have one thing or the other that you will pick from this uh, little discussion that we have had tonight and please if you have any question or something you want to clarify or you have an issue that you uh, you don't know how to handle it please email it to us on lesburyrprzfm.com lesburyrprzfm.com we'll be able to answer your question and respond to your messages god bless you thank you so much thank you for jj thank you dj sad god bless you we continue to grow in wisdom Amen. in the mighty name of jesus Amen. stay safe ensuring that God's message is used to empower everyone, but most especially women. With a strong belief in the importance of women empowering women and educating each other through our life experiences, she is the founder of Women's Forum, Let's Be Real, a forum for women to work through issues and set and accomplish goals together. Held every second Friday of every month, at 6 Elton Road, Lee Green, London. Keep up with Let's Be Real here on PRZFM every Tuesday, 8pm to 9pm.